This is Twit. Samsung and Barnes & Noble this morning unveiled a new Android tablet called the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook. Costs 179 bucks, and you can buy it at Barnes and Noble stores. You can also buy it online. John Biggs is the East Coast editor for TechCrunch and joins us now to talk about this new device. Welcome, John Biggs. Howdy, howdy. Glad you're here. Now, isn't this just a rebranded version of the Samsung Galaxy <laughs> Tab 4 7.0? What's different about don't, the Nook? Don't don't tell anybody that. That's that, that's that, they don't want to hear that. It's my little secret. Oh boy. Um, well, I mean, this is basically kind of Barnes and Noble throwing in the towel in terms of major hardware. Uh, they're still doing their e-ink stuff, but this is essentially them saying, we're going to sell these third-party tablets. They're going to have Nook on them. It's slightly improved over the Nook app that you're going to get, uh, that you download on your iPad or your regular Android tablet. And uh, and that's what it does. It's basically just a book reader. Uh, there's a little button at the bottom now that just you press, the, you press it and you can read a book uh, faster. Uh, that's the major improvement. Now, clearly, this is an attempt to compete against the online book juggernaut Amazon, which makes its own uh, Fire uh, uh, devices. It's got two whole lines of, of ebook reader slash tablets, and they've got a lot more than that. They've got their own um, Silk browser where they harvest uh, personal data and use that algorithmically behind the scenes mm -hmm. to serve up contextual advertising. They've got... Uh, steeply discounted tablets. They've got a lot more downloadable content. They are way ahead of Barnes & Noble. Why even bother coming out with a rebranded Samsung at this point? It's not going to, it doesn't seem to me like it's going to help them compete against Amazon. No, absolutely not. I think what this is, this is their, this is their way of allowing their customers who may or may not be as tech savvy as maybe some of the Amazon customers. Uh, you can just come into the store, you get things fixed, you get things repaired. They'll, they'll set up your Twitter for you. They'll set up your Facebook, sort of a support deal as opposed to a, as opposed to an actual content deal. This is, this would be similar to, I don't know, Barnes and uh, Best Buy offering a special Samsung edition phone that, that, Best Buy will support and maintain and fix for you and do all sorts of good stuff. And hopefully that will draw in some folks who might not want to support their own tablet. Obviously, Kindle and Amazon already have their Made Eye service, which you just press a button and somebody helps you on your on your device, which is a massive step forward. This is sort of a this is sort of a step a minor step forward, I guess you could say, for Barnes and Noble, and it's and it really spells sort of the death knell for uh, for the actual Nook hardware. It is a good deal for certain types of people. For example, if people know that they're going to be downloading content like books, magazines, TV shows, and so on, they were planning to pay for it on some sort of device. This actually comes with two hundred dollars worth of free content, uh, and that includes best-selling books. Uh, you know. Uh, electronic magazines, TV shows, and, and all the rest. And of course, with the device costing $179 and you get $200 free content, it's actually, you come out ahead, theoretically. If you really <laughs> wanted all of that particular content, yeah, exactly. right? If you were going to drop money on that content, then yes, you come out ahead. If so not, for, then it's just kind of like, okay. For sure. both of those people. Now, now, Jason, you, do, as a, as a, Android tablet, what do you think is of this? Is this a contender for people who just want another tablet that's mainly for reading and for downloading this kind of, you know, getting this kind of downloadable content? Or is this just not even something worth considering? I think it's certainly a contender in the sense that the Nook itself maybe had a little bit less brand recognition. Samsung are you know, arguably one of the strongest, um, if not the strongest Android device manufacturers right now. So having the Sam na Samsung name attached to it automatically raises it a few bars. And $179 is not a bad price for, for a tablet that has access to all the Google services. You see the Google Play services kind of uh, in there. At least I see the little bubble that has the Google folder in it, um, you know, with their apps. So that tells me that you know, it's Google Play services uh, qualified and, and you're going to get all of those services. So, um, you know, it doesn't look like a bad tablet at first blush. I haven't di dived into the exact specs, but I imagine they're probably, you know, pretty, you know, mid-range at 179. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad thing, though. In this case, it's all about price, right? And it's $179 for what, you know, happens to be probably a pretty decent e-reader and also, you know, full tablet functionality uh, by Samsung. That's that's a pretty good deal, I think. It's a pretty good deal, and I think what they need more than anything else is mind share. I mean, I've talked to a number yeah. of people 
about the Nook and about Barnes and Noble and asked them, do you know that Barnes and Noble has downloadable TV shows? And uh, every single one of them said, no, I had no idea that they even offered that. So they've got a long way to go before they penetrate the consumer market. They've got a long way to go before they really break into the anywhere near the uh, the stratosphere where Amazon dwells. Now, uh, John Biggs, uh, one last question. Do you think that there's a phone in the future? Are they going to come out and compete with the Amazon Fire Phone? Uh, again, probably with a partnership with Samsung, or are they going to leave it at the reader? I, I think they're going to leave it at the reader. They really don't have that sort of retail. There's no value in having a, a phone that can do all sorts, all the retail tricks that Amazon's Fire Phone can, uh, where you can just swipe it over something and, and purchase it instantly. That's the uh, that's Amazon's secret sauce, and Barnes and Noble just doesn't have it anymore. They they sell books, and sometimes I guess they sell toys now. I don't know what's what they sell in Barnes and Noble stores anymore, uh, but they definitely don't have the range and the value. And there's and there's no reason to have a phone uh, in this case. One thing they are selling is the buildings where they used to have bookstores, and that's uh, sort of a sign of the times, I guess. And hopefully they'll come up with a better strategy to compete with Amazon, and uh, you know, because competition is always good. John Biggs writes at TechCrunch.com, and you can follow him on Twitter at John Biggs. Thank you so much for joining us, John. Thanks a lot.